So what these dolls have in common, including mine, they're art dolls. They're not what you would consider a play doll. You don't undress them and dress them. You probably could if you wanted to, but I have a tendency to create clothing that is already part of the body, like this doll, versus this doll. She's naked completely, and what I will do eventually is create an outfit for her. Will it be removable? I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Sometimes we don't know what to do with our dolls until we're moving along. We've created part of the costume. We've got a sketch maybe, or even fabric will inspire us and we'll decide what to do with the doll at that point. What we're going to be doing in this DVD is I'm going to be sharing different tips and tricks that I've learned through the years on how to do faces, how to do hands, how to do a wire armature, how to color the body to give it dimension, and do a little bit of some free motion work to create our own fabrics. So what you notice first about these dolls are the faces. And that's really the most important part of doing a doll or even a quilt that you're going to put faces on. So let's get started and start making faces. So now right now we have a very strange looking face. Almost C-3PO-ish from you know, Star Wars, one of my favorite movies. We are going to get rid of this very starry-eyed look by putting the upper eyelids in and then of course the lower eyelids. To start with the upper eyelid, I'm going to start at this halfway line, just a little beyond that circle. I'm going to curve around, touching the iris. Some, at some point, you can drop it down or wherever you want it, but you want to touch that eye, the upper part of the iris. If you don't, you're going to have a face that's scared to death all the time. And then you're going to come down and touch the outer edge of the eyeball just about at that halfway line. Our eyes are wet, so they catch a lot of light. So I'm just doing a little, like a little half circle. And you can see how that lightened that green, but didn't change it from green to white. So that's my eyes. Now I'm going to do the lips. And I take my carmine red and I completely fill in both the upper and the lower mouths. So that is the basic face. As I said earlier, any wax-based pencil will work. Any wax base that is easy for you to find, and you can find those at most craft and office supply places. You saw how we did all the shading and coloring on this, so I wanted to go on next to the next step and show you the detailing because if, if you remember earlier, I said to iron this because that pushes the color into the fabric and then use a fixative like Krylons or Prismacolors a fixative. They're either their workable fixative or their permanent one. Either one is fine. So I've sprayed that, let that dry. It takes about, oh, 20 to 30 minutes to dry, depending on your weather. If it's, you're in a damp area, then it's going to take a little longer. What I want to start doing is I'm going to completely outline that upper and lower eyelid again and then go over those eyelashes just to bring them out. And later on, after I get her dressed, when she the head is on a body, I might want to use black because I might give her dark hair. At this point, I'm not sure which color hair she's going to have. So I'm going to read, outline, just go over all of the steps that we did earlier those lower eyelashes. And again, this is all done with my brown. I'm going to outline the flare and the nostril, a little bit of the ball of the nose. So that's the highlights. And she still needs one thing. Our eyes have these rods that radiate out from our pupils. So I'm going to take a brown, because she's a green-eyed girl, and I'm going to outline that iris. Now, I'm going to put those rods in, and they're just little lines that come out 
from the pupils. We now are ready to color this little girl. And I, as I mentioned earlier, I love the Shiva paint sticks and they are an oil stick. So they're a little bit messy. Some people think, oh, they're so messy, but they're wonderful to work with. And you'll find as you are blending with them, you get more of a, a paintlery look, a very smooth look versus the pencils where you can often just see the grain lines of the pencils and, and also the fabric. You're just going to smear that all over her face and getting some of this lighter area up here and not worrying about the eyes or anything because we're going to detail that and as you can see the the Shiva paint sticks are not covering all of your pin marks so they're still showing up. I twirl this in the color and then I'm going to just sort of twirl it in the center of her eyes where I think the pupils are going to be. And that's about all you can do at this point with the Shiva paint sticks. You need to let them dry for three days and then you iron them and then the ironing finishes the curing process and then what you have is a face that you can now detail because it's cured. It's now where you can then take your pins because if I were to use my pins on her on this face now they're just going to get clogged up. So what I do is I do let them cure for three three days and then I come in and I can iron it and then use my pins and you can see I've already started detailing the face. So I will use my brown pen and draw in, darken those eyelashes, outline the eyelid and put in more uh, eyebrows, excuse me, and then her eyelashes. And I outline the iris again because you can see that's very smudgy, but I can outline that with my pen and the smudginess goes away and you can see how the pins are not getting clogged up and they're actually showing up quite nicely. And now I'm going to create that lifeline. So I'm going to bring that thread across the palm and I'm going to come in just below the index finger and just short of this seam here and then I'm going to come down to my wrist again. And I'm pulling that, but not, not too tight. And then I'm going to anchor that by going straight back from the center of the wrist back to the back of the hand because we do have little dimples back here where our bones meet. And then this is going to be a little stitch and I'm going to come back up to my lifeline, the beginning of the lifeline. If you'd like to make, the, to make this doll, we have a PDF pattern in, included in this DVD. And in the chapter menu, you can find it and it will have instructions on how to download the PDF. Mm -hmm.